Uh, back to the book, war fighting also instructs that the quote, military profession is a thinking profession, end quote. This means that Marines must practice mental, the mental discipline necessary to challenge our assumptions. As professionals, we need to dispassionately assess the environment and make certain we are setting the pace for our competitors. I was on with a client the other day, and well, you, you know, the lead into the question that I got asked was, well, you know, in the in the military, of course, it's a it's a very hierarchy uh, s- structured thing, and and what you want is people that all think the same way. You know, that was the lead into the question. Right, so right. then he asked the question, then I had to start with, well, let me just tell you that the last thing I want on my team is a bunch of people that think the same way I do. Right. Actually, I want a bunch of people that push back and think different thoughts and see different perspectives than me. And so here's the Marine Corps quoting from their 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 manual number one, which is called war fighting. Military profession is a thinking profession. And it takes discipline to challenge our own assumptions. Again, it's totally, the, the, it's the complete opposite of what everyone thinks the Marine Corps is. Everybody thinks everyone wants, oh, we want every Marine to think the same. No, you don't. We want them to actually, it's actually we're being instructed to challenge our own assumptions. Yeah, I like that connection too. You were talking earlier about wanting to see this thing connect back to humility, which was that sentence that's kind of started this. And that there is, there is an undeniable connection there. The mental discipline necessary to challenge our own assumptions, the hum- the humility that it takes to go and look at your own guess, your own assumption and go, mm-hmm. I might be wrong. The humility inside of that, and they're calling it mental discipline, but th- those two are completely linked. And even if you just think about the things you say, the, the self-discipline it takes for you to do the things that you do, as disciplined as you are, the reason you do it is that you don't want to get complacent. You don't want to get comfortable. You don't want to get weak. So you have the mental discipline to do that. And that is that is humility. Because if you don't have, you're like, I, don't, I can skip a day. Yeah, I can the, skip a couple days, whatever. Either, either a lack of mental discipline or a lack of humility will lead you to not challenge your assumptions and just think that everything's going fine and we'll just go through with it. My plan's good to go. Yeah. <laughs> Next section is education. It, but before before we go into this next section, let me ask you this: you, Do you remember when I was talking about diving and not wanting to be the buddy? Was yeah, that we? Yeah, totally. So we, that was, I think, when we were talking about, and I was, a, you know, the single seat mindset of yeah. of my experience. You know, That's, is this is it a similar thing where if you're in the back seat, you're just kind of not in control and you're not much to do, and you're sort of yeah. I mean, that was for me and. There were guys just like me that had no problem sitting in the back seat. If if if, if you lined up like ten fighter pilots today and like, hey, do you want to go fly in the back seat of an authentic P fifty one from World War Two? Nine of them be, would be in there like this, and I would say no thanks. So it could even be a hundred or ninety nine of them would say I'll be in there. Just about everybody. I want to get in there. I'm not. I'm not even a freaking pilot. Y- yeah, and and I understand the the historical significance of. It. And I'm not even sure it's rational to even think that, but I I never ever ever, even even wanting to fly a two seat airplane, I didn't want to do that because I didn't I didn't want people looking at me like, hey, what do you like? Hey, I got this, you know. And that, that's all young stuff. I mean, I think I've grown that in, in some ways, but there is an absolute mental uniqueness of. Being alone in an airplane, there's a there's a there's something about that. There's something unique about that. You know, I got a big smile on my face right now. So there's a um, I, I, I I'm not even 100 percent sure about this, but I'm 99. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why this is great. Every time you say single seat, every time you're like, well, it's a single seat. There's a I there's a Ferrari sports car which is one of the most expensive Ferraris that you can get. It's nuts, you know, it's got 10 million horsepower and it can do the whatever. And it's a single seat car. And I, we're gonna, I'm gonna have to fact check this. The name of the car is Ego East. <laughs> that's the name. It's like so, it's like something ego. That's the name of the car. Totally. I'm in this thing by myself. There's not even anyone else to come in in here. It's not possible. This is all about me. Well, well think of the ego. I mean, if you want to think about even just me, think of the ego of 
Um, flying from the military, not good enough. Flying helicopters, not good enough. Flying Cobras, not good enough. Flying jets, not good enough. Flying F-18s, not good enough. Flying single-seat F-18s, okay, that I'll do. Like the criteria of <laughs> what I had created in my mind of what success was, like what success was, was just that. And, and I, don't, I don't mean to like presume that I know what you, you, know, what you, you were thinking, but hey, do you wanna just be in the Navy? That's not enough for me. Uh, you could be a, a diver or like, and you could go through the yeah. criteria of like, and even, and, and I'm, I'm implying like it's kind of crazy, like Green Beret, mm, that's not what I wanna do. Like, Jocko, you know how many people would kill to say they're Green Bridge? Like, yeah, you know, I understand that, but that's not what I want. And I had created a scenario in my mind, like, if it's not a single seat, high lot F-18 in the Marine Corps, I'm not going to be happy, which is kind of, it's insane. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. But that is, that is what, that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> And I don't, maybe if I ended up in a two seat squadron, would I somehow go, hey, you know what? I was an idiot. This was, this is totally awesome. This is great. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe. But you, you, you know, the ego, the power of the ego going. And that's, I think, not to defend myself too much, but I think that's a little bit different than arrogance. The ego and the arrogance, you know, the flaunting of I'm better than you arrogance and more like, no, that to me is the hardest. That's the highest peak you can get to. That's where I, I want to be. And I had created it that that's what I wanted. And other guys like, they didn't, oh, I don't care. I'll fly whatever. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, cool, whatever. I'll fly that. Cool. Go, f go fly that. If you don't have that, how far do you make it? not where I wanted to go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, so there might be some small, tiny, minuscule part of the population that is just so talented that they can kind of just cruise by and they're gonna get it. Right, yeah, there are. And there's some people that are like, guess what I'm doing this weekend? I'm sharpening my knife, I'm polishing my boots. Yeah. Because that was me in SEAL training. You know, me in SEAL training was, oh, guys are gonna go to whatever, you know, go to the mall, go try and meet girls or whatever. I'm gonna sharpen my knife the whole weekend right. and get ready for inspection because I wanna make sure I get through this thing. Cause I'm not sure, I, I see pitfalls all over the place and I don't need any more pitfalls than are already That's in right. existence. And you're not gonna feel like you're missing out either. You're not gonna be like, man, I wish I was out at the bar, or out there at the club. Like, you're not thinking that at all. You're like, this is what I should be doing, this is what mm -hmm. I should be doing. I don't care about anything else. So you don't even feel like you're doing it even though you don't want to you wouldn't want to do anything else. As a matter of fact, if you did the other thing, you're like, you know what I should be doing right now? I should be back home prepping. That's what I should be doing. So the, the I think that's the difference. Well, maybe not the difference, but when you talk about, when you talk about ego and you cross section some humility in there, guess what that equals? That equals someone that's working as hard as they possibly can and holding themselves to the highest possible standard so that they can achieve what they want to achieve. When someone's just arrogant, guess what? They don't do that extra studying. They don't stay and sharpen their knives. They don't, and, and look, there's a tiny minuscule percentage chance that they have the natural talent and it's probably, well, it's, it's, I'll tell you, it's a lot easier in the seat to get through basic SEAL training just based on the fact that you're a really good athlete and mm -hmm. you're decently tough. And if you have that, you can be pretty arrogant and still make it through because you don't really need to do anything extra because you can do a rope climb and you can carry a log around and it's like, okay, you know, you played whatever. You 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 did track and field and you played football and you, you know, you show up and you're 21 years old and you're in really good shape. You can be pretty arrogant and not really have to do anything extra and make it through the program. I bet it's a little bit more challenging. There's probably less people that would fall into that category in pilot school because you get hit with the academics, you get hit with the the, the fine motor skills, you get hit with the, the, the natural ability to, like I remember when I took the test for officer candidate school and they're showing you pictures and what, is this, is this plane? They show like you, yeah, I wasn't even going, yeah, I wasn't even going into aviation or anything. They're showing you a plane. Is this thing coming or going? Right, right. Is this that? And so you're getting hit with those kind of tests as well. So there's got to be there's 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 different types of screening that's taking place that are more there's a there's a broader modality of screening as opposed to SEAL training. It's like be cold, do pull-ups. 
<laughs> that's that, that's not a huge. How much autonomy do you have over your schedule and stuff in in, in SEAL training as well? I'm sure at some points you have zero, but do you have a bunch of free time? Do you <clears throat> surprisingly, what's surprising to a lot of people is you do have a lot. Of, yeah, you do have a decent amount of free time, and that is part of the test because yeah. part of the test is, oh, you want to go get drunk and get in a fight? Cool, you're not here anymore because right. you just got in trouble, and we don't need you in the SEAL teams. Oh, you did. You just went and didn't prepare this weekend, and now you're failing your third inspection. Cool. We don't need you in the SEAL teams. Like, right. so there is a. They have to give you some opportunity. They have to give you enough rope that you can hang yourself, and you certainly can. And there's plenty of guy, plenty of guys that did. Yeah. Plenty of guys that got in trouble in town, didn't come back from Mexico in time for muster, and you know, you hit a couple of those things, and you're you're gone. So they give you enough rope. If you're a knucklehead, you'll hang yourself with it. But. Other than that, if you can do pull-ups and you can suffer, or you, you can do some rope climbs, like you can right. kind of just grit through it. And that's why I think you. That's why I think <laughs> I would venture to say that we have a higher percentage of arrogance in the SEAL teams because you don't, because you're not going to get humbled quite as much as as you are in such a selective scenario as going to flight school. Well, going to OCS, going to the basic school, you know, getting down selected, down selected to get in, down selected at OCS, down selected at the basic school, down selected at flight school, and then down selected to go to Top Gun. Like that's that's a bunch of very narrow, yeah. uh, very narrow funnels that you got to get through if you're going to make it all the way to Top Gun instructor. We don't. That, that's that's a bunch of very narrow things to pass. Yeah, even with that, it's not a flawless system. I mean, even with mm. that, there are guys that are that are there that maybe shouldn't be there. I I, I equate, and I, I'm probably wrong about this. It's just my perception. I equate the seals being a Navy SEAL as as. Even inside the community of these highly, highly capable special operations organizations throughout the different services, that the SEALs, I elevate them in my own mind, that there's just something unique about that. And if I take a step back and I think like, okay, flying F-16s for the Air Force or flying F-18s for the Navy, the Marine Corps, <laughs> look, man, it's the same. And there's probably people say, hey, Green Beret, Navy SEAL, like you could mm-hmm. account a couple of that are... That's not what I had in my mind, that there was a piece that would just set up a tiny bit compared to everything else. That's what I think when I think from the outside uh, of SEALs or at least can understand someone in your shoes going, that one. Mm -hmm. And I would say when I was 18 and I was raising my right hand to enlist in the Navy, that's what I was thinking. Once I was in and I work with the the Marine Corps, I work with the Army Special Force, I work with the soldiers from the 101st Airborne, I realized there's guys here that are 10 times better than me and they're in a they're in a ground pounder in an infantry unit. Yeah, 